I believe that God put every single one of us here on this earth with a purpose. And it doesn't matter if you're traveling just down the road or if you're traveling halfway around the world. Wherever you go, you're going to leave some kind of footprint. The question is, what kind of footprint is it that you're leaving behind? The essence of who we are and the realities in which we stand are evidence of things unseen. And the individual frames of our life that exist between the beginning and the end are influenced with purpose. They are the shadows of the substance. They are the moments that are leading us to hallowed ground. our transatlantic leg of our trip. We got here at Johannesburg. We got one more flight. Emeralds and embers and her gentle eye kindle the coals that are rested in Being a guy from the Midwest, I'm probably like a lot of other guys in that uh, Africa is a place that was never really on my radar. Uh, I'd always seen Africa as a place that was really out of reach for me. I didn't think I would be able to afford it. Um, and to be honest, I didn't know a whole lot about the animals over there. But this past winter through Bo Adams at Campbell Cameras, uh, I was able to meet a guy named Volma Kemp with uh, Africa Anyway Safaris in South Africa. And uh, sitting down and talking with him, listening to just what Africa was all about as far as the hunting really kind of sparked an interest in me. And uh, the next thing you knew, I was giving Joe a call. We were getting a trip together and uh, we were getting our plane tickets to South Africa. And I JD called me and asked if I'd be interested to go to Africa. Honestly, it kind of completely came out of the blue. Um, Africa was never a place that I really even envisioned myself having the opportunity to go and just kind of came to the conclusion that I may never get another opportunity to go to Africa. Her hair hangs long and it falls in waves. The rise of the tide and the swell begins. To low me to sleep on the shore which I wait for the warmth and the burn of that holy flame. Oh, 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 oh. So they take take a strip like this and they'll put their tongue around it and they'll just strip. They'll just strip all these little little fine little leaves off. Wow. That uh, you gotta be pretty hungry. <laughs> so that's the only way that this tree can actually defend itself because everything eats it. I mean, most of this, wow. most of the browsers, like like you'll see, you can actually see the browse lines. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you're talking about there. So, hmm. As we were touring the property and looking at all these animals, one thing that I developed was a deep respect for these hunters that, that live in Africa. If you live here in the Midwest, really your, your knowledge base consists of turkeys and deer. 
Uh, if you move out a little further west, there might be five or six species that you need to, to be proficient at. In Africa, it's, it's more like 30 or 40. You, you have to know their tracks, what their behavioral patterns are, where, what areas uh, their particular niche is in, and, and for these guys to, to know all of the things they do about all of these animals was, was just very impressive to me. So after our tour of the property, we went back to the lodge, uh, we got geared up, formed a plan for the afternoon. Uh, Joe was gracious enough to, to let me hunt first and uh, we were going to be going out and getting after some kudu. This episode of Hallowed Ground Outdoors is brought to you by Quality Archery Designs. Focus on the shop. We'll take care of the rest. Tinks. Industry leading lures and attractants. Non-typical wildlife solutions. Protect your plot with a hot zone deer exposure system. Night muzzle owners. Power, style, safety, and accuracy. Hoyman's Extendable Premium Tree Saw. Evolved Harvest. Grow more groceries per acre. Lakewood Products. Extreme cases for the sportsman. Wild Game Innovations. Nutrition. Attraction. Action. I demand the best. In a game of inches when the smallest imperfections can mean the difference between success and failure, I feel confident knowing that every QAD Ultra Rest has been designed, manufactured, and assembled right here on American soil. With unparalleled precision and uncompromised quality, the Ultra Rest is more than a piece of equipment. It's a part of who we are. I shoot the Ultra Rest, America's Rest, only by Quality Archery Designs. This episode brought to you by Bloodsport Archery, 100% carbon, hand-sorted, premium arrows. Less than 48 hours ago, I was sitting at home in Missouri, and uh, it was summertime, and now, on the other side of the planet, in Africa, and it's winter, so the past 48 hours have been quite a big change. Um, we're hunting here in South Africa with uh, Wilma Kemp, Africa Anyway Safaris, and uh, it is it has definitely been an experience so far, even though this is our first night in the blind. The, the biodiversity on this continent is just stunning. We drove around today and there's just so many varieties of animals, it'll blow your mind. So, we were here earlier to just kind of check out the blind and the setup and uh, look at the trail camera. Saw a pretty good group of red hard beast and uh, a pretty good kudu bull. So, whenever you're whitetail hunting in the Midwest, you get set up and in your mind you're thinking, you know, what buck might come in or, um, you know, how many deer might you see. Whenever you're here, it's, it's what animal might come in, so it's pretty exciting. We hadn't been sitting in the blind, but maybe an hour or two and uh, had seen a few animals, had just been kind of enjoying our, our time there, our first evening in South Africa. And I look out the blind and I see this good look, I mean, to me, was a good looking kudu bull coming in. Uh, Kemp takes a look at him through his binoculars. He said, he's not the biggest bull, but he's an old bull. So we made the decision that, that this, was, this was a good one to take out. I was, I took that split second to ask if you were on him, and then 
I was I was putting pressure on the release, and he started walking again. So you know when this kudu walks off, your heart kind of just sinks a little bit. Uh, you travel this far, and obviously it's only the first night, but uh, regardless, when you're trying to produce for a television show, you have to make the most out of every single situation uh, and every single opportunity. And when an opportunity walks off, uh, it's, you know, kind of leaves a little bit of a sick feeling in your gut. Ground Outdoors is brought to you by Dave Smith Decoys, the highest quality decoys on the market, made in the USA. Tink's Scent Systems turn a big buck's desires into your advantage. Appeal to his appetite in the early season with our forage system. Challenge his dominance with our pre-rut system. Draw on his need to breed with our rut system. Tink's Sense Systems. Now you have the advantage. One of the animals that Kemp was really pushing us to go after was a, a small deer-like animal called a mountain reed buck. And prior to this trip to Africa, I did not know a whole lot about these animals. But uh, one thing I figured out pretty quick is that their eyesight is phenomenal. And for some reason, I don't know how it happened, but every time Joe was up to bat, we were after mountain reed buck. And these animals just gave us fits. You take a white tail back home and automatically you think about their sense of smell being their biggest defense mechanism. You take a mountain reeds buck in, uh, in their home area, in their bedroom, better eyesight arguably than the white tail, great sense of smell, uh, and not a whole lot of cover to get from point A to point B. And these things tortured us for the majority of the trip and we kind of made it our goal to try to put one of these on the ground. They gone. <laughs> it's our uh, second evening hunting here with Africa Anyway Safaris. And uh, this morning, Joe and I went out and had a few stalks on some mountain reed buck. And uh, one thing we found out is there is not a white tail on this planet that has better eyes than what them things do. So didn't quite put it together there. So came back, uh, we're at the same blind that we were at last night. Where we had an encounter with an old mature kudu bull. So we're hoping that he's gonna be feeding back through here tonight or, or another one that's just as good or better. Uh, been seeing quite a bit of game and some impala and some red hartebeests that are moving through here. So we're just gonna kinda hang out, see what, uh, see what comes by. It has gotten warmer and considerably windier, so that kinda has game bedded up right now. So what we're hoping is that as the evening wears on, wind's gonna die down a little bit, animals are gonna get moving.
So just like the first night, we're, we're sitting there in the blind. I look out the window and here comes this big kudu bull. And to me, he, he looks bigger than the one that we had seen on the first night. Uh, Kemp, sure enough, puts the binoculars on him and immediately says, yeah, this is a shooter. Campbell Cameras help Sub-7 tell some of the best stories in the outdoor industry. Whether you're a broadcast veteran or looking to break into the industry, Campbell Cameras has the experience and the know-how to make it happen. Campbell Cameras, relive your adventure. JD's kudu is standing there, and you just really can't get an idea of how magnificent these animals are until you're standing 17 yards away from one. Um, and sitting behind the camera, you have no control. Honestly, sitting behind the camera is more nerve-wracking to me than having a gun or a bow in my hands because you have absolutely no control over the outcome of the situation. Um, so you're sitting there, I give JD the call that I'm on him, and JD just absolutely gives it to him. Stumbled. Okay. Had the shot look. Killed it, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kemp. <laughs> like I said, whenever whenever something's coming in, I'm usually usually pretty collect and cool. After I shoot, that's whenever I fall apart. <laughs> Exodus is still sharp as a razor, ready to pound another one. So, sweet, look at that, nice and bright red. I mean, we already knew that we got lungs, but that's a cool little feature on this arrow, just so you can have the extra confirmation. The, uh, the vitals on these animals are, are different than North American animals. They, they sit further forward in the chest cavity. So one thing they keep telling us is, don't, don't be afraid to aim a little bit far forward. Uh, Cause if you aim back, like where you would shoot at a white tail or a bear or something like that, you're getting into the guts. Stick us back in the quick. We get out of the blind and immediately start tracking, and we hadn't gone maybe 70 or 80 yards, and Kemp points and he says, hey, there's your bull. Holy cow, he didn't go 100 yards maybe? Yeah. If that. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the size of that animal. We get up to this animal and it is by far the, the biggest thing I have ever shot with a rifle or a bow. And to be standing there in Africa over a kudu bull that I'd just taken with my bow, 
was, was a surreal experience. Have you ever heard of a spiral, or they call it the pipe of a goodie? Okay, I'll stand on this side. And then from this tip, you look down, it makes like a tube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight through here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that could do, that tube goes straight up to his eye. So he knows exactly where this tip is. So when he feeds to get the new shoots, he breaks branches with his horns. Interesting. That is and cool. obviously, the bigger that tube is, the bigger this tube over here, the more inches you'll get because it's got a bigger pipe. Okay. As they call it. I was incredibly excited for JD. I knew that it was something that he wanted. I mean, that was probably the number one animal off of both of our lists. And uh, to get that down in that quick of amount of time, I just was incredibly excited for JD. You know, walking up on that kudu and seeing an animal like that, that's so incredibly different than anything that we see here in North America, um, was honestly just, just really hard to describe. You compare it to a whitetail or an elk, and uh, it's just a completely, completely different animal. You know, the, the color of their hide, their horns, just all the detail. Uh, just really cool to see an animal like that on the ground and just a whole new appreciation for the vastness and how awesome God is that he could create the whitetail back here home and then an animal completely different like that over in South Africa. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams would I ever have thought that I'd be coming to Africa and shooting something like this. Absolutely amazing. So at this point in the trip, we had already had the experience of a lifetime. We had seen animals and taken animals that we never even dreamed that, uh, that we'd be able to hunt, but uh, there was still a whole lot more left. Mm -hmm.